And from the start, I guess, and from the pre-production to it finishing, obviously he'd been caught. So that changed the direction. What's that like as an actor to be part of something that is evolving? What happened was they, they the original script they were writing was about the manhunt and the failure to capture him when he was in the Tora Bora caves and they discovered that he was there and they, they missed him. And then he, the, the news came through that he'd been um, killed, shot. So they, they scrapped the whole thing and started again. And, uh, and the CIA allowed uh, Catherine Bigelow and Mark Boll access to some of the information about how that hunt took place. And uh, yeah, it was, it's great being part of uh, a story that you know is written by a journalist rather than made by, you know, Hollywood glamour people. Always going to be controversy as well because of the subject matter and the, the, the torture scenes. I didn't think it was overly excessive actually having watched it. Um, I mean, do you feel it's frustrating to have to try and defend something when you think, look, this is just a good film, watch it? Well, it's strange being cast in the role of spokesman when, when something like this comes up, but I'm quite enjoying being able to kind of uh, talk about it because I think people who believe that the, that, that the film is endorsing torture are completely misconceived. I think they've missed a trick there and they don't realise that it isn't suggesting that it led to his capture. Um, there's another, there's something else in the story that actually leads to his capture, but uh, you can't tell this story without that element. I mean, otherwise, what are we talking about? Censorship? You have to pretend it didn't happen or you can't have it or whitewashing history. It's, it's difficult and everybody, uh, pretty much every right-thinking person realises torture is totally reprehensible and despicable. Um, but it's part of the story and, uh, you know, if you, if you don't want to go and see that story, then, then don't. But mm -hmm. what it does, unfortunately, is it takes away from the fact that the film is riveting. It's a really successful film in a sense that, you know, they say film has three acts, a first, a middle, beginning, middle and end. Well, the beginning is deals with, with uh, the difficulty of, of uh, trying to extract information. The middle bit it deals with the difficulty of how you then translate that information into action. And of course, the final third is all about the raid itself, which is really tense and gripping. So the film almost speeds up. So although it is a couple of hours long, it doesn't feel it. Well, it's nominated in five categories for the Oscars, so that in itself shows you that people are liking it. Does the Hollywood politics that come with that, again frustrate you, I believe was it Martin Sheen's written an open letter saying don't vote for this film. It's just like, hang on, who do you think you are kind of thing? I don't know enough about why they've, Ed Asner and Martin Sheen have, have uh, yeah, written this letter saying um, it should, I think it's because they believe that the film endorses torture. And as I've explained, I, I, I think they're misconceived uh, with that. And also, I, with anything, you know, sometimes people use something to bang their own particular drum, don't they? I read a journalist compared Catherine Bigelow to Lenny Riefenstahl, and that uh, in the way that Lenny Riefenstahl bigged up the Nazis, this is what Catherine was doing for the, the, the administration now. But she's, she describes herself as a lifelong pacifist, and it just doesn't make any sense. Do you think Jessica's prepared for how our life's about to change in the next kind of 12 months because the momentum behind her is gathering and it's really exciting. It's her time, you know, her time is coming. It's the way it works. You work, you beaver away and then something gets noticed and then suddenly you'll find yourself doing a few things if you take your luck and uh, with both hands and um, do a good job, which she has, then she's up to the next level. What advice would you give her? Because you've managed to remain kind of grounded despite the, the massive success that you've had and the very kind of varied roles that you've done. <clears throat> I'm lucky in the sense that I've, I'm a character actor. I, I come into movies and I play a particular part, often quite showy parts which I really enjoy whether they're villains or not. And, um, and I have a family and I live in London and I, I, this is where I am and who I am. And I, I've stayed grounded really because um, I've been lucky enough to keep my head below the parapet. And I remember actually, funny enough, when I was at drama school, the head of the drama school saying to me, if you, if you want 40 years in this business, what's the hurry? And I've always taken that to heart. You know, I'm still learning. You must be the best dressed character actor then because don't the villains get all the good clothes you they said? They do, they do. In my opinion, they get the best clothes and the best lines.